Hi, and welcome to your 27th iOS programming tutorial. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to capture images using your device's camera in a custom camera view. Rather than using the default UI image picker view controller, which displays an iOS camera app style camera within your application to take photos, we will embed a custom square or rectangle in our application, which will have a live camera feed. We'll then make it that as soon as you tap on that camera feed, a photo is taken and displayed in a UI image view. We'll do this using an AV capture session through AV Foundation. Let's get started. Open up Xcode and create a new iOS application. We just need to create a single view application, however this will work with almost any of the options. Uh, probably not Sprite Kit, but it will work in a tabbed application for example, or in a page space application. I'll just call mine Custom Camera. It works on both iPhone and iPad, but for this tutorial I'm just going to do iPhone. Now, go to main.storyboard and let's begin setting up our interface. We're going to, we can't actually add an AV capture session to a storyboard. We have to create it programmatically. But, to make it easier to know where it's located on the screen, let's add a view and we'll just give the AV capture session the same coordinates on the screen as this view that we have added. If you're not sure what the view looks like, it's the grey box with a dotted white um, sort of square in the centre of it. By default it's white, but let's change the background colour to a light grey colour, just so we know where the AV camera capture is on the, uh, on the view controller. I'll put mine around the centre of the view. Underneath it, grab a UI image view and place that underneath and make it a similar dimensions or ratio at least to the view above, so that when we take a photo it's not distorted when we put it into the UI image view. If for example you wanted to create a square photo, make sure that the AV camera capture session view was square. In this example I'm going to create something sort of in between a square and a rect and a, sort of a iPhone sized rectangle. Now Go into your assistant editor and let's create some IP outlets for these various components. Now the only thing we need the view for is when we want to create the coordinates for our AV capture session to save us from having to manually enter coordinates and sort of guess around as to whether it will work. Make sure it's an outlet and we'll just call this frame for capture. And then click connect. Do the same for image view, except we actually will use this to display the captured image. And let's just call this image view. And the one thing I've forgotten to add is a button, and we'll put this button exactly on top of the view. When the button is clicked, it will take a photo. Drag it out so it's the same size as your view, which will ha house the AV capture session, and delete the text, and then change the type to custom. Go back into the assistant editor, and let's hook up another outlet for the button. Uh, actually, sorry, an action. So make sure you select action, ID, touch up inside, sender, and let's call it take photo. And then click connect. Now we need to go into our project summary and we need to add a library. For this tutorial, we need to import AV Foundation as a library so that the app is able to access the AV capture session. To do this, when you're on this summary screen, Scroll down to Linked Frameworks and Libraries, or alternatively, click on Build Phases, Link Binary with Libraries, and you'll see the same thing. Then click on the plus button, and search for avfoundation.framework. Click on it and click Add. Now I'll go back to your viewcontroller.h, or actually viewcontroller.m will be adequate, and underneath hashtag import viewcontroller.h, type hashtag import, and using triangular brackets, type AV Foundation slash AV Foundation dot H. Now let's create our AV Capture session. We're going to create this as a universal variable or a global variable so that it can be accessed by our method that sets up the camera view and the method that takes the photo. So underneath at implementation, but above you did load, type AV Capture session. And you won't see type ahead, but don't worry and we'll call this session. AV capture session should now go purple. If it hasn't, make sure you've imported AV foundation properly. Now inside view did load, well we can do it inside view did appear, we need to 
uh, set up our camera view. So we need to set up the live camera feed. So we'll do view, void view will appear animation. Now inside here, let's set up the code to set up our live camera feed. I'll just set it up quickly, so you just follow along and I'll explain it all at the end. So session equals, open two square brackets, av capture session, alloc, and then init. And then close the square brackets and add a semicolon. Then open square bracket, session, set session preset, av capture session preset photo. So that'll just take a photo. Now type, let's add a new line actually. And we now need to create an AV capture device, which is our camera, of course. So I've AV capture device, asterisk, and we'll just call this input device. And then we need to set it up. So let's go equals, open square brackets, AV capture device input, space, device input with device. And then we also need to set it up so it's got an AV capture device and an error. Essentially what that will allow us to do is go, well, we want it to run with this device, and if there's an error, then we'll set that up to be an error. Before we do that, though, we need to allocate it memory. So, copy... Well, actually, let's delete that line, and we'll do that line next. So let's go back and type AV capture device input. Oh, we can leave it, sorry. All right, let's put that back there, but we need to create an error first so that we, um, well, first let's set this up so that it's setting it up so that it's AV media type video, because we want a live feed, so type AV capture device, default, and then default device with media type, and then we can do AV media type video. Close square brackets and add a semicolon. Now we can create our error and we can set up our device input. So do NS error, and this will create our error, asterisk error. So we'll just call it error. And now type AV capture device input, and we'll call this device input, equals AV capture device input, and then device input with device. And so then we need to give it our device, and we've just created that. We've called it input device. And the error we've also just created so type ampersand error, and the reason you type the ampersand is just so that it saves the error, essentially. It's a bit more complex than that, but that's essentially all it's doing when we type uh, um, ampersand enter error. Sorry. We can now double check that the session can create that input device. So essentially a session is just all the background stuff, and we actually need to make sure that the session can run this device and display the output from this device. So type if, and then open square brackets, session can add input, and then we type the name of our AV capture input, which of course is um, device input. And then inside statements, we go session add input device input. So if it can add this as an input, then we'll add it as an input, and we can set up the rest. Now let's close the if statement, and underneath the if statement, let's set up the code to initialize all of the session. So type AV capture video preview layer. So this is actually setting up the live preview that we will see. And then do open two square brackets. AV capture video preview layer alloc. And then we need to in it with session. And then we give it our AV capture session, which is called session. Now I'll close that. And we're getting an error because oh, we're going to give it a name. So let's just call it preview layer equals, and then we can set it to be AV capture preview layer alloc in it. Now underneath that, let's set some properties of this preview layer. So preview layer, set video gravity, AV layer, video gravity, and then we're just going to say aspect fill. So that's going to do a standard aspect ratio that fills the whole of, uh, the whole of our view, essentially. So rather than a 16 by 9 ratio, like a widescreen TV, or a 3 by 3 ratio for a square, whatever the ratio is, that whatever the size of the session is, we're just going to set that ratio to be the ratio. Now we do a CA layer. Now the CA layer will allow us to 
um, es essentially create the frame for our AV capture pre video preview layer. So let's type CI layer and we'll call this root layer and we'll go equals and then open two square brackets self view and just view and then close that first set of square brackets and then inside the next square brackets type layer. So it's just getting the layer of the view. Now underneath that we can type square brackets root layer set masks to bounds and we'll type yes. And then we can create a CG rect which is the frame. So CG rect frame equals and here we can type self dot view what do we call our variable? Let's go back to the dot h our frame for capture. So self dot frame for capture dot frame. So we're essentially saying the frame of the AV uh, the AV capture video preview layer will be the same as the frame which we set up in our storyboard, the view that we set up in the storyboard. Now we can underneath that type preview layer set frame frame. So it's just setting the frame to be this frame that we've just created here. And of course the frame is the size of the view and the frame of the view. Essentially a frame is the coordinates on screen, so 0, 0 is the top left of the screen, and then the width and the height. So the width might be 30 and the height might be 50. So the width and height of an iPhone screen is different to the width and height of an iPad screen, obviously. And the width and height is in pixel value or point value with the introduction of retina displays. So then we can do root layer, insert sublayer, and then we can give it a sublayer at index. So our CA layer was called uh, preview layer, and then at index zero. And that's a bit complex, and you don't need to worry about what that's doing. Now underneath all of that, we need to create our still image output, and we also need to create an NS dictionary with these settings, and then we can finally get the session to actually start running. So let's do that down the bottom now. Just create a few more lines so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So the next thing to do is to create a still image, uh, an AV capture still image output, which is our output. So let's do that next. So we can finally add our view to the screen. So let's create the still image output up the top again as a global variable. So AV capture, um, sorry, yeah, AV capture still image output. This is so AV capture still image output. And let's just call this still image output. Now again, there's no type ahead, so make sure you type it all correctly. And the error should go away, and it should go purple again. If it hasn't, just make sure you've typed it exactly as I have. Now down the bottom of our view will appear, let's actually display our preview layer. So we can type still image output equals, open two square brackets, AV capture still image output alloc and then init. Then underneath that type NS dictionary and I'll explain all this code at the end because I want to get through this in one part uh, in a one part tutorial. Output settings equals NS dictionary alloc init with objects and keys and then inside the ID we want AV video codec JPEG so we're going to create a JPEG image, comma, AV video codec key. So that's the key, essentially, of our video. Uh, now we can close that line, and then underneath that, let's go still image output, set output settings, and then we can just give it our output settings that we just created in the above line. Then, session, add output, still image output. So the output of the session is still image output and the input of the device we've set to be the device input or our, devo uh, our default camera on our phone. Finally, let's go session start running. So that should display the camera session on the screen and everything. I'm not going to run it yet because I have to run it on my device and that's a bit more complex than running it in the simulator but I'll show you how to do it in the end. For now, let's just finish setting up our take photo method. I'm just going to move it above view to receive memory warning. So let's set up the code to take the photo, and then we can test the app and make sure it all works properly. So, inside our capture image method, let's start by typing av capture connection 
asterisk video connection equals nil. Then we can type for and then in brackets AV capture input port uh, asterisk port and get rid of the condition and increment and semicolon and instead just add in still image output dot uh, yeah dot connections and then inside statements let's do another for method so then here we're going to do for and then again delete the initialization increment condition and everything and we're just going to do in here similar code except we're going to do av capture uh, input uh, sorry, what we should have done before in the previous line was create the connection. So you just change the above line to be AV capture uh, connection and change port to be connection. And then in here we should have the AV capture input port and we should call that port in and then open square brackets connection input ports. And then inside the statements, if open two square brackets, Port media type. I know this code's getting a bit messy, but this is really the only way to take the photo using the AV capture session, and you'll see it'll be worthwhile in the end. So if port media type is equal, and then is equal ID, and then the ID is AV media type video. So if we created a video, which we shouldn't be doing, but if for some reason it's created a video, the video connection equals connection, and then type break, and that will just end the for loop. Now underneath that if statement and the other for statement, type if, and then in brackets video connection, meaning if video connection exists, break, and that'll break the other for loop. Now underneath all of that, we need to create, type um, open square brackets, and type square bracket, still image output, capture still image asynchronously from connection, and then the connection is video connection, completion handler. So inside completion handling, just press enter. Now Xcode's inserted all the other code, you can have a look at it. Essentially all we need to do is after the curly bracket and the square bracket add a semicolon and where it says code we need to uh, pretty much process the image. So type if image sample uh, image data sample buffer is not equal to null, meaning it does exist, then NS data image data equals AV capture still uh, AV capture uh, AV capture still image output so let's just see why is that not working ah oh, we need square bracket equals AV capture still image output JPEG still image NS data representation and we'll just go image sample buff image data sample buffer. And then press enter, and then we can do self. Uh, well, then we've essentially got our image. So then we just need to go UI image image equals UI image image with data, and then image data. Now we can go self dot image view dot image equals image. So the final thing we need to do is we need to make the background colour of our view clear so that it doesn't cover up our AV capture session. So go back to main.storyboard, select the view, not the button, make sure you select the view, and make sure the background is clear colour. It will be light grey colour, just change it to clear colour. Now I've got it running on my phone, so let me open up an app called Reflector, and Reflector will allow me to uh, pretty much display the screen of my phone on my computer for you to see. Okay, so I will mirror my display and here is my phone, I'll remind me later. You just change the size of the device so that you can actually see it. And here we go, here is the application we've created. So you can see it. we've got this live camera feed. I'll zoom in on this a bit. So we've got a live camera feed, you're able to see my device obviously. So here's my computer. Now, if I take a photo, if I tap on the display, 
So essentially I just tap where my cursor is and you can see that we now have this image of what I captured down the bottom. Now we're going to capture, let's capture the trackpad. And you can see the image view is updated to the new image. See so the image looks a bit stretched and that's essentially because the actual AV capture preview layer is more square than it is in the image view. So you just need to change the image view dimensions to match the ratio seen in our AV capture camera preview layer. But as you can see that works pretty well. Have some fun doing this with the camera. Take another photo. Take as many photos as I want. And what you could do with that photo, you could save it to the photo gallery, which I showed you how to do in a previous tutorial where we looked at just standard camera views, and so on. So I'll turn off AirPlay now. So we managed to create the application. I'll briefly walk you through how the code works. Now, if you don't want to see that, you can quit now, or you can close the video now, because you've got the application working. But let's quickly go through the code because it is interesting to see how it's all working. I'm not going to go through line by line because there's a lot of complex code going on here. Let me briefly cover what's happening. So our AV capture uh, session is essentially the back end. It's what's running um, the photo. It's not the preview layer, so we could... Well, let's say, for example, if we got rid of this preview layer, there'd be nothing we could see. So you can't actually see the AV capture session. It's just running the back end, essentially. Now the AV capture device is the camera on our device and that's pretty much finding the default device that's able to take videos. So on an iPhone the default device that can take a video is the, front, uh, the back facing camera. Now you could also set up a segmented control for example that switches between the back and the front facing camera and I will post the code on how to do that shortly on our website 99centsappdevelopment.com Otherwise just google front facing camera AV capture session now we're then creating the device input, so we're actually creating the input so that the phone can recognize that device. And then we're going AV capture session, so the back end, let's add this as our input, as our main input, the device input. Obviously if there's an error, we're saving that to error and we could display that error message, but we're not worried about doing that for now. If you wanted to, you could create a UI alert view, and I've done a tutorial on that too. And that could display the error if there was one. And then creating an AV capture video preview layer, and that's what you actually see on the screen, that's that square thing. And that's the, pretty much the, the live feed of the camera. And that's essentially going, okay, well let's make it fill up the whole of the frame, and the frame of course is that grey square that we created in our storyboard. If I change the size of that grey square, which we of course made clear, but if I change the size of it, the size of our preview layer would also change. If you were creating this programmatically and you didn't want to use a storyboard, you would of course just use CG rec to make and then you can put in the coordinates manually. I just, uh, for the sake of making this tutorial as simple as possible, decided to keep it mainly focused on the storyboard. We're then going preview layer, which is our preview layer, we're setting its frame, so we're saying, okay, well let's set the frame to be the grey squares frame. And then we're going root layer, which is our view, insert sub layer. So that's like self add sub view, self dot view add sub view. So essentially we're just going on a phone, you've got a view, and then you can add other views, sub views like buttons. And in this case, we're adding a layer because preview layer is a layer, it's not an actually a view. So the way we add a layer to the screen is by getting the views layer, the layer of the main view on the phone, which is the whole phone screen in this case, and we're saying add another layer on top of that. Instead of adding it's essentially the same as adding a view to a view, except we're adding a layer to a layer, and the layer is the preview layer, and the other layer is the view, the main screen's layer. Then we're essentially setting up the code to create the image output. So when we take a photo, we're getting a still image output, or essentially an image representation of whatever's pictured in the AV capture video preview layer. So we're going still image output, let's allocate it some memory and initialize it. Then let's give it some settings, and in this case it's just creating a JPEG is what we're essentially trying to do. And then we're setting its settings. So we're going, okay, what are your settings? Well, my settings are whatever we've just set them in this line. Then we're adding the output, still image output to session. So as soon as the session takes a photo, it's going, where do I output it to? Well, I'll output, I'll, we'll output it to my default output, which is still image output, which is this code here. And then we're clean, I was saying start running. So start the capture session, start the live preview. Now if the button is create, uh, tapped, the IB action take a photo is called, and this is the code to take a photo. 
most of this code here, which I've highlighted, is just doing error checking and going, well, how many outputs are there, and, um, well, how many, is it a video, is it an image? So essentially we're going, we've added an output here, but Xcode doesn't know whether we've got one output or we've got five outputs. So it's going, okay, well, let's work out how many outputs there are, let's work out if it's an image or a video. In this case, we've only got one and it's an image, so we're going to skip to this code. Then it's going, still image output, which is our output, our session's output, of course. Let's capture an image, and capture image, still image asynchronously from connection. Essentially just means, capture the image, but do it in the background. Don't disrupt the live feed. So don't stop the live feed for a second while you capture the image. Just keep going as normal, but, so asynchronously pretty much means in the background. And we're going to capture it from the connection, video connection. So we're capturing it from pretty much our preview layer as you can see here. And then the completion handler, essentially what that does is it means that as soon as we capture the image, all of this code will run. If we didn't have this completion handler, the time it takes to, it might take the photo, and then it will do the next code, but the next code, which is saving that photo, the photo wouldn't yet exist, because it might take a few milliseconds for the photo to exist. So all of this code isn't run as soon as this code's finished, it's run as soon as this code has been completed. And then when it's completed, we've got a few variables we can then work with. Same sample buffer ref, which is essentially the data tr created from our image. Because essentially an image is just numbers. It's just various pixel values and color values. It's not actually an image. An image is just a way of interpreting it. And then we've got an error. So if there's an error, we could check if there was an error. So we could do if error, and then put uh, you know some error code like creating a UI alert view, and alert view a pop-up saying there's been an error. We're not going to bother with that though, we're just saying if the data does exist, so that's saying is not equal to null, so if we did equals equals that would mean if it is null, and null means there's nothing there, so if there's no data, then it's not doing anything, but if, if there is not no data, so if there is data, then let's run this code. So we're getting ns data, which is essentially a different way of interpreting the cm sample buffer ref, so we're essentially converting cm sample buffer ref, which is a series of numbers, into a series of numbers which can be interpreted by an image into a, uh, a JPEG, or a still image. And then we're creating a UI image, which is just in, uh, which is an actual image now. We're saying the UI image, let's get create an image from this data that we have. And then we're saying, let's make this image view, the image view we have on the bottom of our screen, let's set its image to be this image which we've just created from the data. So that's how all the code works, and I hope you found this tutorial to be of use. We've had hundreds of requests for this particular video, so hopefully it will be of use to many of you. If you have any questions about using an AV capture session, or generally about iOS development, visit our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com, check out our Facebook page and message us through that, facebook.com forward slash 99centsappdevelopment, or message us on YouTube. To keep updated with all of our videos, Please subscribe and please like this video to keep them coming. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.